Let's get into our next discussion now. Tourism is one of the most relevant sectors globally and holds the potential to generate billions for developing countries like Nigeria that is yet to fully exploit the sector to boost its GDP. But both developed and developing countries have been hard hit by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. As the world commemorates the World Tourism Day today, the aim is to highlight the travel industry's social, economic, economic political and uh, cultural significance. This year holds more significance as the theme Tourism for Inclusive Growth focuses on the importance of inclusive recovery and ensuring that no one is left behind as the world gradually reopens the tourism sector. That is the crux of our discussion this morning. So joining me is uh, Omotayo Omotosho, the former Director General, Nigerian Tourism Development uh, uh, Corporation. It's nice to have you join me in the studio. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Morning. Good Great. to see you. Well, from your days as DG of uh, the Tourism Corporation, and even after that time, you are still very involved with the issues of tourism across Nigeria and uh, even beyond. But let, let me start with the theme for the tourism development, this, uh, you know, the commemoration this year, Tourism for Inclusive Growth. How significant is that? And when we're talking about in, in, inclus in, inclusiveness, what are we talking about here? Thank you very much, mm. uh, Mike. Um, we believe tourism cannot exist in isolation. Okay. And so the theme was well thought of and well couched. Mm. It couldn't be more significant. What do we mean by tourism for inclusive growth? We're talking about all other sectors that have one thing or the other to mm. do with tourism. Okay. Tourism cannot exist without transportation. Mm -hmm. It cannot exist without environment. Mm -hmm. It cannot exist without health, without education, without uh, culture. Mm -hmm. So it's all multi- Agriculture, science and technology. Say that again. <laughs> we have agri-tourism. We have education tourism. We have science tourism. We medical have conference tourism. tourism. Yeah. Say that again. Wow. Some people call it medical tourism. Mm -hmm. Some people call it health tourism. Exactly. So tourism is life. We in the tourism sector, that's what we say all the time. Tourism is life. There is no individual living today that does not have one thing or the other mm. to do with tourism. And so for us to be able to galvanize the sector, we came up with a theme that is all inclusive. Mm. And that's why we call it tourism for inclusive growth which means all other sectors that have vital roles to play mm. for tourism to thrive must come together. Mm. And this is in line with the SDG, the Sustainable oh, yes. Development oh, yes. Goal yes. 17. So who does, who does all the governizing <laughs> and the aggregation of all of these different sectors? Because the point there is, is actually very important. But, uh, well, like you said, education, they're doing their own thing. Health, they're doing their own thing. Agriculture are doing theirs. Um, uh, uh, science and technology are doing that. So who does the, okay, everybody come together, let's see how we can, who does that thing? Very good question, Mike. That thing is very, very important. <laughs> and I must say that the right person to do that thing mm. is uh, not just the Federal Ministry of Culture and Tourism, okay. but even our Mr. President himself. Mm. Uh, I said that because of the experience we had while I was working and serving Nigeria mm. as Director General of Tourism. We realized that all these other sectors, they're not under the uh, supervision of Tourism Ministry. Okay. So what we did was myself and my minister had to go approach the president to tell him that we want all of the sectors that have things to do with tourism mm. to come under one tourism umbrella, and we call it Presidential Council for Tourism Promotion. Mm. Presidential Council for Tourism Promotion, PCT. Mm. And so it took a long time for us to convince the president because he says, oh, he's president to all of the sectors. Mm -hmm. We said, oh, yes, but not all the sectors. Mention other sectors, Mr. President, that have everything to do with all other sectors. Hmm. except tourism. Hmm. So when we explain that and we did our presentation, we compare it with international best practices, hmm. how they've been able to do a lot in tourism and we want to catch up, he saw a reason what we wanted hmm. to do and 
decided to be the chairman of the PCT. So how did that go? And how did that go at the end of the day when it comes to what vision you had for bringing all of these together? It it went a long way because with that we were able to also have state governors mm -hmm. that have things to do with tourism because not all the governors were ready for tourism at that time. Okay. But those who were ready were about 50% of our governors. And so we had the governor of Bauchi because of Yankari National mm -hmm. Park. We have that of Lagos because of the peculiarity of Lagos mm -hmm. as the most cosmopolitan yeah. city in Africa. We had that of uh, Kebi State mm -hmm. because Abu. of Arugungu. Yeah. We had that of Oshun because of Oshun Shobo. Okay. We had that of, uh, we had that of uh, uh, Nasarawa because of Farinrua Waterfall. Okay. We had that of Kaduna, Borno because of the famous Doba Festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had that of River State. We had about maybe about 20 governors mm -hmm. and they sat together with us and active players from the private sector because government cannot do it alone. Mm -hmm. So we had the uh, what do you call it, captains of industry okay. and of course big hoteliers looking at the hospitality mm -hmm. subsector of tourism. Yeah. And we will gather together and all the homework we needed to have done. We would have made sure we'd done them before the meeting. Hmm. And the president was available only for once in six months, but we were able to achieve a lot. I'm happy to tell you that I'm told by our um, um, information culture and uh, tourism minister that Mr. President has approved hmm. the PCT. Amazing. Because we kept on saying this is the way to go. Mm. All other sectors must come together oh. with the tourism. So I would say keep your fingers crossed. Okay. A lot should happen we, from that we ambience. We'll keep it crossed and see what comes out. Now the point there is before now we, we've often heard that Nigeria is not ready for tourism. We've often heard that one way or the other. I'll if, tell if, you where if, you if, if you if you if you compare to <laughs> countries like Kenya, Tanzania, and some other African, you know, a few other South. South southern african country or eastern african country where they are intentional for instance like even like rwanda for instance doing a lot in tourism because and they are gaining the benefits of it and nigeria has even much more if you make comparison to what we have as potential uh, what would you say well, are we ready? Yeah, I, I would say we are ready. Mm. We, uh, what made people feel we weren't ready mm. had to do with the fact that um, um, we didn't have a very active, um, boisterous private sector okay. operators mm. for tourism. Mm. But I'm glad to let you know that the face is changing. We're actually looking at promoting tourism from the green lens. Okay. What do I mean by green lens? Cleaner energy. We want tourism to be promoted in a decarbonized environment. Because if you have fulfilled the environment, no matter how beautiful or how sweet you uh, uh, market your nation, yeah. people will still have the flaws. We must decarbonize. And how do we do that? We're doing it in partnership with the private sector that have risen up now to say, they're not going to wait for government. Let government do what they need to do in terms of security, mm -hmm. which is key, yeah. in terms of infrastructure, but we have the African Tourism Board, and I was on a conference meeting with them yesterday. Yeah. We marked the World Tourism Day yesterday, okay. no more like in preparation mm -hmm. for today. Mm -hmm. And we had the Honorable Minister for Tourism from Botswana join us. Amazing. We had uh, the representative from Senegal, we had from South Africa, and we had the Executive Chairman uh, for the African Tourism Board mm. himself and our Nigerian representative who is actually the vice chairman of this big body ATB and she is chief uh, Mrs. Nana Okuribido mm. and myself. They were all those we call authorities of the sector okay. at the conference mm. and this question you asked came up mm. that how do we galvanize tourism as a continent? which mm. was the beauty of mm. the conference. Mm. We don't want to be doing it in isolation. Exactly. We must collectively mm. join hands together. And we all realize that, yes, the first thing to do is to ensure that through collaboration and cooperation, mm. we can gain greater heights. Mm. We can promote the sector. Not Nigeria to do its own, and Botswana is doing its own. So I'm happy to let you know that today, since that of uh, the meeting and the brainstorming of yesterday, we have decided that we must work together for an inclusive growth. Mm. Secondly, now that the private sector are taking the bull by the horn, you would see a lot of difference. Be before, you were right to say that a lot of people feel Nigeria is not ready, Nigeria is not ready, mm -hmm. because we have the teaching problems I mentioned, and our private sector are not that financially 
uh, empowered okay. for you to be able to be active for you to be able to make a success of tourism as a private operator you need to be financially empowered exactly some other nations provided seed money mm. seed money for their private operators mm. to tap into I'm aware that Lagos State Government, under the uh, current uh, Sanwolu administration, also has provided some money mm -hmm. for the private sector. We want the same to be done at the national level. Mm -hmm. We want Mr. President to do that because that will give it a boost. Mm -hmm. A good thing that the ATB, that's the African Tourism Board, is taking the bull by the horn. But we want our private tourism operators to also be empowered within Nigeria. Okay. Or else we will find it difficult to catch, All right. to catch up with the developed economies. Okay. Let, let, uh, we'll talk about marketing Nigeria soon. But before then, let, let's talk about the issue of the Nigerian it is one thing to have all of the infrastructure, you know, roads Security. and... and but the Nigerian... How does this seem Exactly. That, but be, be, besides that, it is said that Nigerians, as much as we like enjoyment, sometimes the issue of go on vacation, try to relax, and all of that is not, you know... Part of us. A part of, part, part of <laughs> us. What do you say? <laughs> I know you've, you've been asked this question so many times. I know that. <laughs> You're so right, Mike. Everybody my. wants to hustle. Just keep yes. hustling. Money, money, yeah. money, money. Not even have the time to enjoy the exactly. money. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you are right. Mm. The first take here from me is the fact that, and I want to use this medium to let Nigerians know mm. that we must stop holidaying abroad. Mm. We do that a lot. We go to UK, we go to US, we go to far east asia we go to south africa we go to kenya mm -hmm. we must stop and holiday. say that again yeah. we must stop <laughs> holidaying abroad let us develop what we call domestic tourism some people call it community-based tourism we're still saying the same thing we have a lot of beautiful places to visit here why does a nigerian feel i don't need to even travel abroad or travel anywhere let me just work 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 mm. because i believe that so much, not even the belief, so much priority had been placed on acquiring money. Yeah. Not quality living. I love quality living. I don't need to acquire, acquire money. Because what's money all about? You acquire, 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 you work, 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 work till you die. Mm. And you're not enjoying yourself. Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You don't need to wear expensive gold and jewelry to enjoy yourself. Mm. You don't need to look for five million, ten million to buy expensive outfit to enjoy yourself. That's why you'll see me in my lovely Ankara. It doesn't cost well, much. It looks but I love quality living. It, it looks expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it looks expensive because my designer, you don't mind my designer, she has a way of garnishing it. But it's really amazing. It's really amazing. It brings out that, uh, that, culture. that culture and that uniqueness and that, that originality. Say that again, uh, and, that, and that is why Nigerians are always very happy with uh, someone like Ngozi Okonjo Wela, who is always, my good you know, sister, reflecting. Promoting us. Very promoting good. us at the so international that, So that brings front. us to the issue of marketing. Marketing. Yeah. Because the point there is, on international media stations, sometimes you see beautiful sceneries and some jingles and marketing strategies of different countries telling us, oh, visit this country, visit that country, and all of that. Nigeria is not doing all of that. So when you're talking about the issue of Nigerians have to do a lot of domestic uh, uh, tourism, if those things are not marketed to them, how do they know that I can what? travel to Benue, or I can travel to Aquaibom to enjoy myself, or I can travel to Bauchi to enjoy myself, as the case may be? Thank you, thank you. I, I need to say this. The statutory responsibility of marketing Nigeria as a tourism destination lies with the Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation, mm. NCDC, okay. where I was as DG. Mm. And I'll tell you the way we did it. Mm. While I was there, we didn't have enough money Government didn't give us enough fund, but we didn't take that as an excuse. I told my people, I can't tell Nigerians that I failed because I didn't have money. What did we do? We went out to court, like a courtship, hmm. the private sector operators, captains of industry. A lot of my friends are at UBA, Tony Elumelu. We went to uh, Atedo Peter side, I beat to see. We went to Leitre Miolo Wude, God bless his soul. Mm. IGI, the leading insurance company mm. at that time. Mm. We went to Jimovia, Zenith, and we told them, I led the delegation, we told them, that we wrote to them, and then we went visiting, told them that we have what we call Corporate Partners for Tourism Development, mm. CPTD, mm. that we've appointed your bank, 
your institution, your organization as a corporate partner for tourism development. And this is my agenda for the year. January, February, March till December, I had it all drawn out. Mm -hmm. By the time they saw it, they said, oh, Ms. Omotosho, no problem. We know you can do it. We'll support you. One takes two mm -hmm. to sponsor. The other takes three. Another take four. Another take two. Believe you me, we didn't wait for the government anymore. Mm. We had the private sector supporting Amazing. us, and we win markets in Nigeria, Amazing. outside Nigeria and within. And what did we get? That time came when we had to go to the ITB Berlin, one of the biggest marketing exhibition, uh, what do you call it, summits mm. in the world. And we needed to represent Nigeria in a way that all of the nations will come and bow take a bow in front of my hmm. exhibition stand. Wow. Wow. And we didn't have the money. We went to the government. Uh, the president said, okay, release something to them. At the end of the day, they gave us maybe 25% of what they had approved. Hmm. But with this private sector I mentioned, yeah. they supported us. What did we do? I commissioned the best photographer, the hmm. best video producer, hmm. film producer, to take the best pictures of hmm. our tourism assets Amazing. all over Nigeria. Big billboards. Hmm. Some on audiovisual, we went to town. That's ITB Berlin, wow. together with Miss World. Hmm. Oh, that was great the catch. strategy. Together great strategy. with Miss World. That's By amazing. By the time we got their mic, all other nations, hmm. we had about 200 all over the world at ITB Berlin. All of the nations left their own store oh. to, <laughs> to come, come to Nigeria stand. in front Wonderful. of my Nigerian stand. Wonderful. And I felt so happy oh, yeah. being a Nigerian. <laughs> I felt so but proud. I think, I think we have to do those things again. Again, you know, again. So I would enjoy my uh, brother who is a DG tourism yeah. now okay. to see how to court the private sector. All right. Not now, waiting for government yeah, fund because exactly. the fund may not come. May not come. Because there is a lot of pressure on government. A lot of pressure, a lot of sectors demanding. Right. What, what we have to do is, uh, beyond a day like this set aside to commemorate today, we have to keep talking about this issue of tourism so that, you know, uh, one way or the other, it can create opportunity and also awareness. So I'm going to bring you back again for us <laughs> to talk about this very sometime very soon. No problem at all. Thank my, you so much. My pleasure seeing you. Omotaya Omotosho, former Director General, Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation and Media Entrepreneur. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I Thank wish you, you great Thank success. You. That's the way they say we should be oh, greeting yeah, now. Oh, yeah, that's how we should be greeting <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>